Um, Fight Island is happening. It is going to be working uh, in the middle of June. And Dana White said today on a radio station in Chicago that we will have Habib and Justin Gaethje in July. I'm pumped about it. I think it's going to be a fantastic fight, but that also kind of goes back to what we're talking about with McGregor yesterday, right? Where does he fit into all this? What are we going to end up doing? McGregor's going to be fighting probably at the end of June. He'll probably be one of the first fights on Fight Island. Uh, this whole thing is is kind of crazy. McGregor obviously does not run this division anymore. But Chris, I'm I'm excited about Habib and Gaethje. I think uh, I think that is the biggest fight that you could possibly have right now when you look at the UFC 249 numbers. Uh, 249 pay per view number hit 700 thousand. That is tied for the third highest pay per view uh, UFC event in the last three years, dating back to 2017. Now, obviously, the highest is Habib and McGregor. That was 2.4 million. And then after that, you had McGregor and Cowboy, which hit a million. And then you've got Gaethje and Ferguson and, uh, what was it, John Bones Jones and, and somebody else. Uh, every, every one of Bones' fights ends up being massive, right? Yeah. But he, he had one that hit 700,000. He had another that hit, that hit uh, 650,000. <laughs> Tyrone said, Chris got a better shirt on this time. Matt said, you've got sound effects? Like, yeah, man, we got... All kind of stuff, man. We're we're rocking and rolling here. Um, I that the pay per view numbers for UFC two forty nine were incredible, and I think we kind of expected it. But it was strange when you look at the prelim numbers that were only one point three million, and I mean almost every prelim fight does about that on ESPN. So it was kind of strange that the pay per view ended up being such a massive deal. You, you're just not getting casual fans for prelim. You're not. You're getting. The, you're not. getting the fans you've got for prelim. And and then of course everybody that wants people to hop are in hurting on the fight. for sports. But I think people were rammed up and ready to watch UFC Saturday night. I don't. I don't know that that meant they wanted to spend six hours doing it. You're probably right. I didn't watch a lot of the prelims. I did have it on, yeah. um, but I didn't watch a ton of them. So I, I made sure I was watching Cowboy. I watched uh, uh, Fabricio and whoever the other guy was that beat him. Like, I, I watched a couple of them. Uh, the Cowboy fight was great. All the other ones were kind of, eh, you know, whatever. So uh, tell me tell me your thoughts on this. Uh, Gaethje and Habib on Fight Island. How, how do you feel I'm, I'm about glad that I'm glad that Dana came out and announced that fight. I, I hope that we get it. I hope that we have no setbacks from all this stuff and we can need to go forward and, and we actually get it. I really want to see Connor. I'm really anxious to hear who he's going to fight. I want him to fight in June. I'm ready. I'm ready to get this thing going. Yeah. I, I, if he's going to fight in June, I would assume. They got to name it soon. They got to announce it. They got to announce it very, very they gotta soon. They got to give him at least a month to train. Yeah. And, it, and who knows who he's going to fight. Like, obviously – we think it's going to be Nate Diaz because there's been talk about a contract already. Uh, I I think it should if he wants to stay in 155. I think it probably needs to be uh, uh, Dave, uh, Dustin Poirier. Excuse me, uh, Poirier. Whatever. Um, I I'm excited because they're going to be doing fights just nonstop. It feels like. Like it's, I, I, I kind of thought they were going to do one a month, like back to the normal pay-per-views. You think they're going to do it nonstop? Well, they're, so their contract with ESPN, for them to get their entire thing. Every, everything goes out the – man, this pandemic threw everybody off. I understand. You hold I, everybody to every contract. Uh, understandable, but ESPN has already talked to UFC and said, you got to get 42 events, otherwise we got to cut the contract. UFC. Well, yeah, obviously, you don't get paid. We're going to get into that later. You don't right. get paid for 42 if you don't do 42. Well, here's the but deal. you get paid for what you do. They did the one on Saturday. They've got one on Wednesday, and then they've got another fight night that's coming Saturday, and then they're going to keep them rolling. So all these fights that they had to cancel back at, in at London some and point wherever. In time, though, we're going to run out of good fights. Like, oh, these are going to be basically prelim fights all the way through. That's, yeah, pretty much. Uh, now, 
Wednesday so night. At that point, I'm not the UFC guy that's going to tune into everything. I'm just not. I'm not. Oh, no, no, no. Give me a good fight, and I'm in. But I'm not. I'm not interested in what's going on with if I don't know these guys. No, I I agree. So uh, this one on Wednesday has got Anthony Smith and Glover Teixeira, right? That's going to be pretty good. Ben Rothwell against uh, Ovent Saint Pro, uh, Alexander Hernandez and Drew Dober. Like that's these are all interesting fights, up and coming guys. They got Ray Borg and Ricky Simon. Like these are guys that not the casual fan knows, but fight fans know. Uh, then on Saturday night, you got Alistair Overeem against Walt Harris. You got Claudia uh, Garalhala. I don't even know who that is. Uh, <laughs> you got Edson Barboza fighting. You got Eric Anders fighting on Saturday night. You got names. You got some guys that were supposed to be fighting and now are finally getting a chance to. Now, the next one is not scheduled until June 20th. And they'll, you know, they'll keep pushing it back, keep doing whatever. Um, but, yeah, at, at some point, yeah, you're going to run out of, you know, good fighters. You're going to run out of uh, things that people are interested in. Because people are not just going to tune in for anybody fighting. Uh, and then once you get into probably July, you're going to have boxing back. So you're going to start getting, you're going to get sports back. But it may not be a ton. I, I love the idea that you're going to have these massive fights that would be big gates. But you, you obviously saw the potential for uh, making the money a different way by people staying in their homes. Basically what UFC did with no fans in the arena by doing that, that pay-per-view bout with a fight that people were interested in is they gave the people what they wanted at home since they can't go out. And it's, it's what Universal Studios did with releasing that uh, the Trolls movie a few weeks ago, right? We've talked about that on the show. You can't go to the theater, so we're going to set it up, and we're going to do it anyway. That way you can still get it. I, I understand, like, it, the gate is, is nothing compared to pay-per-view, but for some of these fights, it, like I said, this was the third highest pay-per-view that they've had in three years. Some of these fights, the gate really matters. Some of them, it doesn't. Like, it, the gate doesn't pale in comparison to the pay-per-view. But I, I love that they're doing this. I think this is a fantastic idea. Uh, I'm glad that they're not waiting around to get Habib and, and Gaethje because it, it, typically Habib... No, I'm with you. I'm for that. Like, I'm not against any of that. Yeah. But, but trying to do three or four events in one month is just... It's crazy. I, I think at some point in time, you're watering down your product. Oh, yeah. Now, the big thing is, like, these other ones are the free ones that are on ESPN Plus or ESPN or whatever, right? So, Wednesday night, it's on ESPN Plus. Saturday night, it's on ESPN. You know, it's those are the free ones. You you ain't got to pay for the pay-per-view. The pay-per-view ones are going to be the big ones, right? That's You're going to have McGregor on pay-per-view. You're going to have Habib on pay-per-view. You're going to have, you know, whoever, uh, Naganu and, and DC and all those guys are going to be on pay-per-view. Because that people will pay to watch them fight. But there's nobody's gonna pay for Anthony Smith and Glover Teixeira. Like that's <laughs> nobody's nobody's gonna buy that pay per view. But at least it'll be on on a Wednesday night when nothing else is going on, and it'll be interesting. Uh the McGregor stuff, he said he's looking forward to seeing the fight in July, but I think he's coming back in late June. I think McGregor will probably be the first fight on Fight Island. I think it's gonna be a massive spectacle. People are going to be interested because it, they're supposed to be doing this on a beach, man. You remember us talking about this? It's going to be insane. So I, I can't wait. I think McGregor's going to be the first one. Uh, if it's not Nate Diaz, I think it'll be, you know, Dustin Poirier. 